Hey everybody, it's Nick here with another video on how to use the Power Platform and how to extend it using um, Pro Developer Techniques. So as we know, out of the box or out of the box, you can very easily configure what we call lists and forms on a Power Pages site. So this way I can create my list, but if I want to add new data into Dataverse, I can just click here, create. And this is a form that I created to be able to add new data into Dataverse directly from a Power Pages site. Now, you've seen dozens of demos of this already. I've done demos, I've done sessions on this. If you follow the learning path for the Power Pages in a day on the MS Learn now, you'll be able to learn how to do this. Pretty straightforward. This will serve the purpose of you know most of your requirements when building a Power Pages site. However, there are times when you want to actually go a little bit further and you have maybe special requirements. And this is where you could use something like a regular HTML form. And then because you have access to that code, you can extend it and do some special things. Now, in today's example, I'm really not going to go too deep into the, the extensions of what you could do, but I just want to cover the basics on creating a, ver a custom HTML form and using that and the Power Pages web API to write back to Dataverse. So before we dive in, let me just quickly show you what that would look like. I have this web API create example in the site, and what it's going to do is showing here is a very simple form where I can just quickly add, I'm just going to add test. So I've filled in the information on this form. I'm going to hit submit. And what that's going to do, it's going to use the Power Pages web API and write this back to Dataverse. And I have this little alert coming up, record added successfully. We love doing alerts for debugging, right? Probably not really <laughs> the best idea, but I just really wanted to show the example. So we've added this record and this is now part of Dataverse using a custom HTML form. So let's dive in to see how we did this. So we're going to have to do a series of things. First off, we're going to create a custom web template. We're going to add an HTML form. We're going to add the Power Pages web API code to write this back to Dataverse. And of course, we have to add those site settings in order to use the Power Pages web API. And then the other thing we should do is add some CSS to make this form look a little bit presentable. I've added this now. You probably want to add a custom CSS file. But again, this is just something you want to consider when you're building this out. Okay, so I'm in Visual Studio Code um, for desktop. I've used the PAC CLI. I've downloaded my site. I'm actually editing the code. I have other videos on how to do this. I don't think I need to rehash this. If you're already a pro developer, you should be using these tools. Downloaded the code. What I've done is I've created a new web template. And again, I have a video from a few weeks ago of how to create web templates using VS Code. Of course, you could create those using the portal management app as well. I've created this template. Let's just quickly go through it. First off, yes, I've cheated. I've <laughs> I've added the style just embedded directly in the web template just because I'm a little bit lazy. You, of course, would want to add that as your own CSS and apply that formatting to your entire site. So let's not worry about that now. I have the appropriate divs in here just to divide out that page a little bit. Let's just narrow this down a little bit here and the different classes. The first thing I've done here is I've added, I've also included the Portal Web API Helper. Now, just quickly, let's just pause on this for a second. In order to use the Portal Web API, you're going to need this helper file. Now you can embed that code, you can copy it from docs. Um, what I like to do, and I think I've explained this before, is I like to create my own web template that has that Portal Web API, just basically pasted in a, in a script tags on its own template uh, within the power in Power Pages, and then once I have that template created, I can reference that same template using the include in my code, um, my liquid include here. So this is just in a little aside, something I do just to keep. I like to keep all my JavaScript code and helper files and everything in web templates, and I can reference them. That way, I only need to update it once. I have this now. The next thing I do is I have this form here where this is where I want to collect the data that I'm going to collect on my Power Pages web page that I want to collect and send back to Dataverse. This is just a very simple HTML form. I have my different inputs for the session name, session description, date and time, duration and minutes, very much like I showed you a few minutes ago. And then of course the submit action. And this, this is HTML 101. There's a lot of different sites like W3 Schools and a few others that can show you how to do this. How I did it, just 
again, not that I don't know how to do it, but I actually used ChatGTP and some of those AI tools that just said, hey, create me an HTML form that collects these pieces of information. And it actually created and formatted it for me and I just pasted it directly in my code. So this is where some of these uh, AI tools really come in handy for um, Power Platform developers. Um, I don't have Copilot installed on here, the GitHub Copilot. And I also know that GitHub Copilot doesn't do uh, power pages uh, specific code yet um, hopefully that's something that will come down the road i hope so um, but in the meantime we just got to use these other tools which is fine so i created that html form second thing we need to do is from this information let's call an event based on that submit so i'm going to go to my scripts and i have a document ready here and again we want to make sure our scripts get loaded before they execute or the whole page gets loaded so that's why i use that document ready function I have this form submit function. So basically anytime anybody hits that submit, that's going to trigger this function. First thing we're gonna do is prevent the, uh, the default form submission and that's so when we uh, hit the form submission, we can do our own things with that. That's just again, HTML 101. Next thing I'm gonna do here in this code is I am creating an object. I'm creating this record object. And from here, I'm actually using the schema names um, from the dataverse because that is the record I want to update. I do want to update a specific record. Um, here are the field names now. And, and now I'm filling in the HTML form values um, that we filled in on that HTML form. So the dot value of the session name, description. I kind of like to use the same names for both the HTML form and the object just to keep things consistent just so we know what they are. Of course, we do have to do a little bit here like the parse int for the for the duration and that kind of thing. That's all well and good. Um, one thing I do wanna go scroll back up here is the, um, the date and time um, that is following a particular format as well. The next video when I talk about editing data, we will talk about editing date fields because that's a little bit tricky. So for here, I've collected my object. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call that web API to, we're gonna call a post function because we are going to be creating a record. Now, the key thing here is in the URL using the API is using the entity set name, which is generally pluralized. So here I have docs underscore sessions where my field or my table is actually docs session. It's a little thing, but it could really trip you up. Now, how do I get around this is I like to use the Dataverse REST Builder to build out my functions for writing to the Portal Web API. So let's just flip and take a quick look at that. So here I have the Dataverse REST Builder. I've got, I'm using it through Chrome. I've installed it using the Chrome store. I've created a new request. I filled in the, the details of, I want to do a request type of create. I can do different things here in my configuration. I chose my table as session. I'd be able to look that up by connecting directly into my Dataverse instance. Now I've added specific fields here that I want to use in my, my query. Now the cool thing is I can just, I see those different things. I want to go to portals because I am using Power Pages, formerly known as portals. And we see here that we have the, the code in here that I can cut and paste directly in here with the different fields and things like that pretty straightforward and of course the cool thing here is it's filled in that s that entity set name so that's where these things don't like screw up on me so anyways i'm able to copy that data and then go back and paste that directly into vs code so this is basically where i've gotten that function um, so i've put that in um, you'll see this in the sample code that you can download from github and that link is going to be in the corresponding blog to this video um, there is a function here just to show you the read capabilities. Now, I don't want to focus too much on the read capabilities today because generally I don't use this read function all that much because usually we would pull this using liquid, although liquid's on the server. So there might be times where you do want to use the read. But anyways, um, that function is there. You can check that out. So we have our full script. We have our web template. The next thing we're going to do, of course, is we would create a corresponding um, with Power Pages. I'd create a new page template because remember, Web templates will point to page templates and then the page templates will use to create the custom web pages. So I've already created a, web, a page template and then finally what I would do, um, I would go and create a corresponding um, web page. Um, and then from that web page, I would use the page template which points to the web template. Now that we have all this code together, the other thing we need to remember is the site settings for the Portal Web API. And we need to do that through the Portal Management app. 
So I'm here in the portal management app, which of course is the model driven app that we can use to configure our power pages data, uh, metadata, essentially I've in the website section, I've gone to site settings. I've done a filter for anything on web because we're using web API. So we here I have doc session enabled, meaning I've enabled that particular table. So we'll be accessible using um, the power pages, web API. I've chosen all the fields now in a production situation. You probably want to specify the fields only here that you want to be available through the portal web API for here. I just did star because again, laziness. And then we also have the inner error. I've turned that on too, in case we need to do any kind of debugging with this. So now that we have this set up, the other thing, of course, we need to do is set up table permissions, table permissions. So allow our users to make sure they have the ability to create those records. So I don't really focus a lot on table permissions right now, but well, actually let's just take a quick little detour just as a quick refresher. So yeah, quick little review on table permissions. We need table permissions. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So we've set it up here. I've given basically full information, global access to our sessions, to anybody belonging to the event manager. So that user I've logged in on is does belong to the event manager role. So then they can go in and create new sessions. If not, they would be blocked. Again, this is all about security. This is very important. You do have to have a good security strategy whether you're doing stuff pro code or even low code techniques. Um, so again, this is something if you're working with power pages, you do need to master how table permissions and web roles and all of this links together. It's really not that hard. Um, but if you do want some more videos or blogs on this, I'm more than happy to do it. Just let me know. So I've just taken, I'm in the design studio here. We have this web page. Now you can create this web page within the design studio or you can create it through uh, VS code, whatever you prefer. Um, it does need to point to the particular page template um, that will point to the particular web template. Um, so that's, I think, you know, pretty well documented on how to do that. So we have this um, form here to submit that. So again, we can actually go and basically do the exact same thing. Let's preview this. And here we are, the form comes up and we're able to go in the same as we did before and add the new record um, to Dataverse and just to prove that it did it, let's just uh, put this in, let's hit submit. And for troubleshooting, we can always check our dev tools. Let's just do this again for fun. Test five. This is a test, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Put in some, ooh, that's 35 minutes, 34 minutes. And if I hit submit, we see here that I have the GUID get spit back. That was just part of the console we had written back here. So dev tool, I think I'm gonna do some more stuff on dev tools down the road on troubleshooting and things like that. But really that's the gist of it. So it's added that particular record. And if we were to just close dev tools for a second and take a look at our sessions, and this is the sessions here are just a regular list. I've already had a lot of data in here. I scroll down and we can see all this crazy test data that I've just added using the portal web API or power pages web API. Anyways, hope you found this video um, insightful. And I, it's really exciting that we can actually use some of these regular web development techniques that you might have already been using for years on building other regular websites and you can apply these to power pages and extend that so of course having the ability to have access to your html code the fact that you have access to you know your code directly the html code the portal web api code really should give you a really expand a lot of your options in terms of extending how you build your power pages sites for specific things now again stick with the low code tools because they do a lot there's a lot of advanced configuration of course multi-step forms um you know doing subgrids all of these things so you can do a lot so i would say stick with that the most you can but of course Every single project I've worked in, there's always been those cases where we do need to kind of go that extra step. And this is where this type of technology really helps us and really allows us to build powerful websites. Anyways, uh, the next one, the next video I'll do, I'll show you how to edit an existing record using a custom HTML form. Look forward to that.